All right, hello friends. It is September 5th. This is the Labor Day long weekend. We've booked the short week off and so I thought this would be fun for a reading vlog. So far this weekend I finished Fight Nights by Miriam Taves. This is her latest novel. This was weird and good. I don't think it's my favorite Miriam Taves novel. This is an intergenerational story. So we have Swiv, we have her mother and her grandmother all living in one house. Our narrative perspective is Swiv because her mother is pregnant and like slightly unhinged and her grandmother is very elderly and I can't tell if she is perhaps experiencing a bit of dementia or is just incredibly eccentric. It is never clear to me what is up with the grandmother. And it's their journey, their relationship, learning about one another, loving one another, going on an adventure together. And it was on the surface, I feel like very touching, very much reminded me of how lucky I was to have grown up with my grandparents, grown up quite close with both my grandmothers, but also the narrative perspective of like a nine-year-old kid. Like it reads very much like a nine-year-old is telling you the story. Miriam Taves has definitely captured a young voice and I don't know if I love it. It's a little bit like Room by Emma Donoghue. Like if you find that sort of child narrator, that limited perspective of them capturing something, and like you as the adult reader know what that actually means, if you find that sort of narrative annoying, you may not like this one. I don't know that I would recommend starting with Miriam Taves here. I think Swing Low Life is much better and gives you the larger family context because again, Taves, the human, has experienced a lot of trauma, her family were Mennonites. They grew up in a Mennonite community, very conservative, very um, debatably abusive. Her father dealt with depression, like pretty severe depression, and was failed by the mental health system and died by suicide. Swing Low a Life sort of chronicles his life. So Taves is writing as if she were in her father's head trying to understand where he's at. Then Taves' sister dies by suicide in a very similar fashion to their father. All My Puny Sorrows sort of fictionalizes and chronicles that experience. This is looking at a fictionalized version of her mother and like the intergenerational relationship that Taves currently has with four generations of Taves women in one household in Toronto. Family is very much a huge part of her works and the fictional working through of trauma with her family is very much part of her works. This is not the place to start with Taves, but it is a nice addition having followed her career and the themes that she's always working through. I feel like this very much fits in and I, I really enjoyed this. That's the first book that I read in this reading vlog. The next we have um, Pumpkin by Julie Murphy. So this is a book that I pre-ordered. One of the goals that I set for myself halfway through this year at my mid-year check-in is to try and finish all of the books that I have purchased, like pre-ordered for this year. Pumpkin is one of those books and I believe if I finish Pumpkin, there will be one month that I have read literally everything that came in and that feels like a very good thing. So Pumpkin is about a boy named Waylon who is very into a fictionalized version, I think, of Drag Race. What do they call it? It's something so fierce. The queen that he wants to win doesn't win because the fat drag queens never win. And Waylon is fat and gay and very much trying to fly under the radar, but when this loss happens, he films this angry drag performance of his own, and when that video ends up getting shared around, he jokingly gets nominated as a prom queen. What is he gonna do with that? Is he gonna go to prom and drag? Is he gonna embrace being a prom queen? Be out and proud in a way that like he's never been at his small town Texas school, you know? He's waiting to be flamboyant and beautiful till he leaves his small town. He has this closet full of clothes that he only wears in safe spaces, like when he knows he's not gonna leave the house. So will he embrace it? That's what we are going to find out. And so far, I'm really enjoying it. It's a Julie Murphy book. Her books generally feel like a warm hug. So yeah, that's my plan for today. Gonna read some pumpkin. I'll update you. All right, so I just finished 
Pumpkin by Julie Murphy. That's the back of the book. Pumpkin. <laughs> and it was delightful. It was adorable. I love that we got to see Willow Dean and Millie again. So the characters from Dumplin' and Puddin. I thought it was really cute, really warm and fuzzy. I think better than Dumplin'. Definitely better than Puddin. This might be my favorite of the three. I'm gonna cross off Pumpkin in the bullet journal. So we've hit neutral. I have read all three that I hauled in May. Part of me feels like I really wanna keep up this momentum, so maybe I wanna pick something like that I know is going to be a success, that I know is going to be a fun read. This shelf is sort of what I'm working on tackling, right? It's the books that I hauled this year. Part of me is feeling like maybe some Bridges Shoals. Victoria Schwab, middle grade. The other part wonders, is it time for the next Becky Chambers? I think I might try a chapter from each of these and then that will be my next read. Good morning. I'm just gonna be filming a reading vlog, doing a little bit of editing. Um, I haven't decided which book I want to go with next. So I might do that, try a chapter from both Bridge of Souls and Record of a Spaceborn Few. I am going to get ready. I'm gonna put some sunscreen on and eyebrows on and try and make myself feel less like a bag of smashed assholes. Okay, so this is the sunscreen that I'm using. It's a mineral sunscreen. I don't think sunscreen necessarily agrees with my skin because ever since I've started using sunscreen, my skin has freaked out to varying degrees. However, I know that it's important to wear sunscreen. Slightly more presentable. <laughs> um, okay. Eventually. First chapter of, ooh, what is this called? Bridge of Souls has pretty impeccable vibes. So we're in New Orleans and they're in a creepy hotel. The color palette's really rich. Even in just the first chapter, which is a lot of like preamble and setup, we set up who Jacob is, which is this ghost that follows Cass around. Cass and, this, Cass and Jacob are sort of tied together. Ever since Cass almost drowned and Jacob saved her, they sort of pulled each other into this in-between space where ghosts aren't supposed to be. Um, so like that setup's all there. The reality television show of her parents is there. So even with just that, I am intrigued. I love the setting so far and I'm excited. But let's also give the first chapter, bit, whatever, of Record of a, Spa Record of a Spaceborn Few a shot and see which one I'm feeling more like today. Okay, so I read the prologue for this. This starts out with a disaster. So there is a group of people who have space colony and one of the living quarters has some sort of accident because it's all really old tech and it decompresses and there are like hundreds of thousands of bodies in space. And they, one of the perspectives is somebody cleaning up those bodies. So they run the, the death industry or whatever there, the, the funeral practices there and they're collecting bodies from space and they're wondering like, well, our, our composters are only capable of composting like so many bodies at a time. Like, what are we gonna do with these bodies? Like, we don't have the capacity to store this many bodies. How are people gonna grieve? You know, I like death stuff, funeral industry stuff, but I feel like Bridge of Souls might be slightly more fun. Still like the sort of spooky, creepy vibes as we're getting some cooler weather here, but less disastrous. So I think I'm gonna stick to Bridge of Souls today and we'll maybe pick up Record of a Spaceborn Few tomorrow or later this week. Later. Okay, so it's four o'clock and I just finished Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. This is fun. This is a fun, spooky little book. It's set in New Orleans and normally Cass hunts ghosts. This time, an emissary of death is coming after her because she has cheated death. She's stolen life. This was very fun, very quick. Very much makes me want to go to New Orleans. The descriptions of the food and the cemeteries and like the architecture and the history, it just sounds like a place to put on my list. There aren't a lot of places 
in the US that I want to go. And New Orleans has sort of been on there. It's maybe in like the five places I would be interested in going. And reading this book sort of solidifies that, yeah, I, th I think I'd like to go to New Orleans. I'll talk about this more in the wrap up. So I am going to update my reading journal and I am then going to plug away at this a little bit before dinner. Good morning. So we have a gentleman in this morning to look at our furnace. I don't quite understand what's wrong with it. I don't fix furnaces. As we're approaching some cooler weather, it's probably good to have somebody look at it. This morning I have been listening to an audiobook and working on crocheting this granny square sweater for fall. Like I'll make a bunch of one row at a time. Uh, I am listening to some easy listening. It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Tessa Bailey is the like romance author that I keep going back to despite the fact that the three books in the Hot and Hammered series had like kind of ridiculous abusive men as the heroes. My library fed it to me basically. So that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. I'm drinking some iced peach tea, crocheting, listening to the book. I was planning on doing some other filming, but you can hear there's quite a lot of noise happening and I don't want that in the back of other videos. But the things that I want to get done today are an autumnal TBR, looking at another book haul, like one of my early book hauls and seeing what I actually read from that. And then I'm thinking about taking one day this week to do another Tamora Pierce related video. I'm just sort of picking away at a Tamora Pierce project in the background and I'd like to release it once I have more of it together. So I'm working on that. A little later. All right, so I fully embracing the cliche. Pumpkin spice latte is back. And uh, I have one of those full McDonald's cards. So I got myself one because why the hell not? got to do it at least once a season, especially when you have a full card and you get a free beverage. What have I accomplished? I have committed the cardinal sin, I think, of creating a vlog within a vlog, which I think is not a good idea. I think I'm actually going to pull out a separate memory card. So I just filmed a five-star prediction video there's your little teaser for it because this will come out first and i have edited my august wrap up it is at 100 percent rendered now so i am going to upload this to youtube let it get situated so that i can start adding the description and all that jazz we had somebody come to look at the basement and he thinks that the reason our basement is leaking is because our trough is ancient and broken, which our home inspector told us last year, but the problem is that it just needs trough. It's a tiny job and like so many people are having work done on their houses right now that a roofer isn't gonna come for a tiny job. So even though it's now causing problems in like our basement and like our roof is leaking into our bedroom, <laughs> eh, we're having trouble getting a hold of a roofer because I'm not getting on the roof. Fill in my body with pumpkin spice. I'm channeling Edward Cullen with my mineral sunscreen. 48 hours later. We are attempting salsa today. We have onions, garlic, green peppers, jalapenos from my lovely neighbor. We traded tomatoes for jalapenos. We got cilantro, all the tomatoes, um, and then the poblanos are for hummus that I'm making after this. I have the big pot that is probably going to end up on the propane burner outside. So let's go. Yeah, look at it bubble. Three days later. Today is Sunday, September 12th. It is the last day of our vacation, of the time that we have off. We go back to work on Monday, September 13th. I read three books, but in terms of like the other things that I wanted to do, 
not a lot happened, which is okay. Sometimes you just need a vacation to like recover. Today, we decided to go on a big walk because my bike tire is, uh, has like a huge cut in it, a huge hole in it. So I have to order a new tube for my bike. So we didn't go on the bike ride that we had planned and instead went on an 11 plus kilometer walk to a cute little coffee shop that recently opened up. Now it's just time to potato. The last thing on my list of things to do is to clean our bathroom. Miles gets to wash the sheets. I have to tidy up my office at some point at the end of today so that it's ready to go to work tomorrow. I'm just working through Record of the Stray Spaceborn few. It's not going where I thought it was. It's a very quiet, like, people character read. There are almost too many characters, I think. I'm somebody who has issues with some books with too many points of view, and debatably there are too many points of view in here. I'm gonna keep reading and I will let you know what I think. All right, friends, so it is eight o'clock on Sunday night. Uh, so I just finished Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. It was good. It was slow. It was plotless. It was very much about the humans and the characters as they interact with one another. And that's fine. I didn't love it the way I have loved some of her other works, but it did what it set out to do. We're looking at life on this human space civilization. They have never found a planet to settle like they were sort of planned to do, I guess, when the Exodans built this space city. It was supposed to be temporary, but many, many generations later, everybody is just used to being in space and can't fathom life on the ground outside of the colony, or at least a lot of people can't. There are obviously people who leave um, for the greater galactic commons. We get to look at life in the, in the fleet from various perspectives. There were a little too many perspectives for my taste. I struggle with when there are too many perspectives, like getting emotionally involved and like caring, but overall I thought it was good. I'm very tempted to pick up the fourth in the Wayfarer series. However, I also bothered to pre-order Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney, and I have been excited about this for so long. So before there are too many reviews for it, before I see too many reviews, I've already seen three. I'm gonna dip into this next, but that will be for another video. For now, I'm gonna end this here. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you read any of these books? Did you like any of these books? I would love to know what you think. Thank you to my patrons for making videos like this possible. I really appreciate the work that they enable me to do. I hope you are all doing well, that you are staying safe, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye.